This is an 11th video in this series with uh, Make Human Model in Blender. And also a video where I'm going to be experimenting with some changes in my video. I noticed in my last series a serious decline in uh, quality of video that I was getting on YouTube. And previous videos I had been using a different video codec and I'm returning to that codec to to see if I get an increase in my quality and if this is a codec issue. And also, I'm changing over to a widescreen. Um, looking at the YouTube video standards, they've changed since the last time I looked and include widescreen and higher resolutions that, well, I was a little out of touch on and didn't actually realize that that YouTube had increased its resolution by so much. Um, the last time I checked it was a, a very small VHS level resolution for the video so hopefully these changes will see an increase in the quality of my video from now on. And I'll be watching and experimenting with that for my future videos. In the last video we finished parenting the rigging to the body's mesh and now it's time to look at parenting the rigging to the other parts of the body. So I'll clear my transformation, choose my rigging, put it into object mode and pick one of the other objects. So I'll pick the first layer and zoom in have a look at what I get. So it looks like the teeth. So I'll parent the teeth to the rigging, control P, make parent to armature, create vertex groups from bone heat. And then take the, select the teeth and look at the vertex groups. Now on the teeth, I only really need two vertex groups for the placeholder lip bone and for the jaw bone. And none of the other vertex groups are very relevant to the teeth. So I can erase those vertex groups. So I'm going to erase all of the vertex groups here by deleting them until I have only the lip and the jaw remaining. And I'll come back with that completed to save time in my video. With only the jaw and the pH lip bone remaining, I can now take the teeth into edit mode. So I'll tab into edit mode with those deselect everything using the A key. Select the jaw vertex group just to see what blender is assigned and it's assigned far too much. Only the bottom row of teeth should be assigned to the jaw vertex group. I use Z key to take my model into wireframe. Remove all of those vertexes assigned to this group. Then when I select that vertex group, nothing will be selected because it's all been removed. Now I'll brush select the bottom area of the teeth. Use Control L to select weight and this will select just the bottom row of teeth and I'll assign those to the jaw vertex group. I'll repeat the same process with the lip. Deselect everything. Select the group assigned by blender to the lip bone. Remove it because it's far too much. Come up, deselect everything, brush select only the teeth appropriate for the bone, the upper teeth. Use control L, select length, and assign those to that vertex group. Tab back into object mode, select my rigging, go into pose mode, and rotate the jaw bone. So I'll rotate the jawbone, making sure that my pivot is in median point. And rotate that bone. And now the lower teeth rotate with the jawbone. The upper teeth stay anchored to this placeholder bone. And when viewed with the main model, the rotation and action from the main model has not been altered. So now a similar process needs to be repeated for the other bones in the assembly, or 
meshes in this assembly. So I'm going to cut out of my video, check on how much time I have left, and come back with the rest of these body parts and how to do those. So I'll be back in just a moment with that. With a little less than five minutes left, I decided that I would go ahead and simply parent these objects to the rigging and just describe what I've done. So I parented the tongue to the rigging, selected it, and deleted all of the vertex groups except for the jaw and the neck. And I choose the jaw and the neck so that when I rotate the jaw, I get a motion out of the tongue. As well, I get a deformation because the neck is holding a weight across the tongue as well. And that keeps the tongue moving in conjunction with the mouth properly and gives it a proper deformation inside the mouth. And although that's not too visible, it does come into play in different poses with the model. And then there's the eyes. In the eyes, they should be pretty obvious. I deleted all of the groups except for the left and right eye bones. And there was no need to assign any weights to either of these parts, just deleted all of the vertex groups except for the relevant ones. And the same goes with the hair. Except it holds more vertex groups. For it, I've left the two placeholder eye bones as well as the head bone, the neck bone, and the two placeholder bones on the ears. And I leave those two bones, or those six bones, I should say. I can't seem to find the other ear. But I leave those six bones connected as vertex groups because I want the mesh deformation for the hair to be the same as the mesh deformation for the head. And by selecting all of the bones that are relevant to the deformation in the head, which includes the bones for the ears and such, when I rotate the head, the hair will rotate and its deformation will be appropriate. And this is particularly relevant around the neck and in the ears as well when I rotate the jaw. In the next video I'm going to further talk about these placeholder bones and show some of the weight values that they help to assign when assigning the vertex groups to the model. So that'll be in the next video and until then happy modeling.